What? We're live. You check. When the music starts, we're live. You know that. Where's the, where's the, where's the five, four, three, two, one? Now you tell me. Rewind that. Start over. <laughs> of them. It's got to get everything organized and standardized and organized. That ain't and happen. reflected, detected, and ejected, and rejected. It's not going to happen. Gotta make sure we have so we stand up to the community standards of Facebook. We don't want to be a shoe off Facebook, putting Facebook jail. Everyone right standard. standard. Christmas edition. There's a Christmas tree in the background of that picture. You can't really see it. It's my Uncle Rob, my Uncle Jim, my Uncle Tom, my Uncle Dave, my cousin Richard, me. Yeah, Jeffrey Blackmon, we know you weren't here, bud. We know. We um a little disappointed. Wasn't the same without you, Jeff. Really wasn't. We had a good show too. So go figure. I think we had a good show. It felt pretty good. I don't know what's good or not anymore, folks. One thing though for sure. I'm in the job. Fill in John Zone, I'm in the job. Fill in John Zone, I'm in the job. Fill in John Zone, everybody. Everybody Everybody. in the job. Fill in John Zone, in the job. Fill in John Zone. Oh, number two. In the well, folks, this has turned into a real pandemic, epidemic, uh, extreme situation. We do the show so often that uh, we don't even remember what we're, what we're doing here. Um, tonight, special guest, Thing Adams, and possibly special guest to jump in throughout the show. We'll see. Um, I don't know yet. I'm going to make one up. We're going to make, we're gonna make a character. I'll change, my, I'll change my hat and sing a song maybe or something like that. And okay. we'll call it Phil and John's own. play guitar. Yeah, Phil, Phil's gonna play guitar tonight, folks. Uh, you might want to mute your screen. You might want to mute your uh, volume at that point in time. Oh, I've heard him play. I've heard him sing. He's got a good voice. We've we've done harmonies before. Um, we did harmonies at, at Sugar Creek one time when we were sitting there and doing the zone together. And we sang along together. And it's actually one of my favorite moments of the show because we were both feeling very excited in that moment. And and the band was playing a song we liked, and it just um it just happened. It's just one of those things. And, and Jeffrey Blackman, the reason I am doing Thing tonight is because two two reasons. Two weeks ago, you said we haven't had Thing on the show in a while, and me and Amy started watching Wednesday on Netflix, the new Adams Family spinoff. Have you seen that yet? That was going to be brought up in my notes. Yeah, I watched uh, the whole thing in two days. Oh, don't, well, don't spoil it, because I've only watched the first I'm going to tell you. Oh, don't tell me what happens. <laughs> Wednesday turns into Thursday. Ah, it's for, we can't spoil it for everybody. We, we Even if both of us saw it, we can't spoil it for other people. Yeah, anymore. it's... Um, but yeah, Wednesday well, Adams is, uh, was there. So, Thing, how you doing? How you doing, Day? He's pretty excited to be on the show. You see the, all, all the scars from the show and the dirty fingernails. That was just um, that was just makeup. He was very, uh, very, um, he's very clean, ornate dude. He washes his hands constantly. He was well, he was washing his hands before it was cool. So, so yeah, folks, thanks for coming to the Phil and John Zone. I got to do a couple shares real quick. Uh, share yeah, if you um, dare, share it if you can. Wednesday is the number one. Uh... I do believe number one Netflix show around the world. I didn't realize Netflix. I figured well, Patrick around told the world, me eighty-eight just, countries. Yeah, Patrick I thought told it was me very it intriguing, surpassed. and I did not realize it was done by Tim Burton. Yep, yep. They just so surpassed the Stranger it. Things. The Stranger Things had the record. It was like, and then it just um, it just surpassed it the other day. Well, you know, for me. To sit and watch a miniseries, I has it. Uh, Stranger Things. I, we watched the whole thing. Just finished it up a week ago. Thought it was good, except the last couple episodes got yucky for me. Um, the whole thing. Did we watch all four seasons? Yeah. yeah. It's dark. It's a. It's a good show, but they really they push the limitations of what like twelve year old kids should be. We, we'd make sure for. we could get three episodes in a night instead of doing one or a you know three. Yeah. And then you know get, what's funny about that? Like when you stream shows. Oh, by the way, folks, this is week uh, 136. It's Friday, December 2nd, 4 p.m. Central Time. I'm John. This is Phil. Phil and John's on. Welcome for tuning in. Thanks for giving Hi, a share. I'm Phil. Here. Hey, John. And we'll um, we'll go from there. Sorry, I'm just responding to it's Charlie Otto. Uh, Wednesday, speaking of that. had to go somewhere. So. Finished Wednesday. 
Um, we finished Wednesday, so I was, we were only about part way through. We very finished, in, was very impressed. So for me, what did we finish recently? We finished a few things recently, but I don't remember what they were. They must have been so good that I can't remember what I watched. Yeah, I, a couple of recommendations for friends, and I can tell in twenty minutes. I got mm, not for me. If a show is not for you, you know right away. Pretty much, just like music, pretty much. What pretty turns you off to a show? Like, what makes you not want to watch the show? Um, is it like gratuitous violence, or is that something you don't mind, or is it sex? No, it... Um, no, 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 none of that. Um, I like if, well, I don't like docu series because I like real documentaries. I don't want to see a, someone else playing. Uh, oh, like a biopic, like a like. Yeah. Did you like Bohemian Rhapsody? No, no, he didn't like that. No, won't do it. And I'm a huge Queen and Freddie Mercury. Fan. Won't do it, or you have? Did you do won't it? Won't do it. I, actually, I did watch it and laugh. It gave me, it gave you the feels, like because they, nope. they, they they do a whole nope. bunch about the Live Aid performance, the big one when they came back, you know, nope. at the very end of his nope. life. Instant, anyway. great, great, great uh, thing you brought up there, John. No, exactly why I don't. Just don't want to see. Me. What about the Doors? Nope. Hmm. Nope. Nope. Uh, anything like making that a Whitney um, Houston one now I, and I want movies to, to if it could be to be well I shouldn't say true I never not all movies are true well yeah, bio biopics, biopics depend on if the person's alive or dead or not and you know what you're gonna get yeah, I'm finicky I guess like everybody else but Ray was really good but they waited till after he died and they told all the stories he probably didn't want told it seemed like to me um uh, if you watch Ray, you say you don't watch those kind of movies. So that, but that was a good one. I've been in all Guy Ritchie movies lately. What about the Blues Brothers? Is that a biopic or is that like a? No, I, I like that one. It was not. That's because... not a biopic. In, in a way, it is. I mean, the Blues Brothers was a real band, right? And they were really known as the Blues Brothers, but they didn't play themselves. Yeah, that's yeah. not. No, that's a com. No, that's that's a. T that's... Kurt Hawkins must be coming in from the shit house. Why are people coming in? Hey, Jeff, for you to say hi to the people that are out there. If you're out there, make a comment tonight on the page and tell the listener there. We don't know if you're watching or not. The numbers, I don't trust the numbers on Facebook, and they're pretty low usually anyway. And I think people are actually doing stuff inside the house now, so people hopefully will get a chance to come back out and hang out with us. I'll be doing some live drawing tonight, and um, it looks like Kurt Hawkins just checked in. I'm not sure if I met before, but very nice to meet you, Kurt. Very nice to meet you. We're always looking for musicians to come on the show and do a performance and, and play. Uh, so I appreciate we, we appreciate that. Yeah, we are, we've been doing this for 136 weeks. We don't even know what we're doing yet, um, but it's what we do. Call it a radio show. Call it a radio show with our with our pretty mugs on it. Um, that's okay. Dogs are going to bark. It's about four o'clock, so it's usually what happens. Um, um, so if you got a suggestion for the drawing, you can put that on the on the side too. If you want me to add something to the, to the drawing, or if you want Thing Adams to add something to the drawing, because that we're going to interview Thing Adams from the Adams family because he's um. He wore the same shirt as me tonight, which is kind of funny because I thought, you know, but he he planned ahead. But he said he would answer any question. Wait a minute. It looks like your hand. No, my hand's here. Oh, that's right. See, look. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> it is someone else's hand. Huh. Yeah, I like cool. how uh, when's, uh, I was a big Adams Family person to begin with, but I liked how they incorporated uh, the old Adams Family in there the way they did. Very cool. I do too. And I haven't watched the whole thing, so please, please stop talking about it. But I did love the, I love who they got Louis Guzman for uh, Gomez. That's just it, it, the, it was just a great. And they actually made Pugsley a Hispanic boy instead of just a little white boy, you know, because Gomez was definitely Hispanic. But Another note, another time. Was it Morticia possibly Italian? I'm not sure. She spoke Italian. That's why we got Gomez rocks off. But <laughs> anyway, it's almost Christmas time. We're like three weeks from Christmas or something like that. Or it's 20 days away from... yet. It's okay, so like three weeks until Christmas appro approaches. And um, I wish it would, we'd have snow with this cold. Did you get any mail this week? What? Did you get any mail this week? We, I was going to say that in the show. Just well, we'll talk about it. talk about it later. Then we'll talk about it later. Gun. You know, you screw Not up. trying to. No spoilers here, but we we are the spoiler alert. A little monkey. But I just um, I just wondered if you. Weirdo. Know. I know. Weirdo. I'm weirdo. Weirdo. I'm a little short beardo. Not much of a beard anymore. It used to be long, you, long. Business, but you're a weirdo long. or a creep. Well, I got some mail yesterday from a uh, a friend of mine. Uh, and everybody should have one. It, now my collection is complete so far, and I dare not color them. Um, I got a book in the mail. John's latest one, Weirdos and Creeps. Thank you, I Jeff. Jeff got his package. Thank you. 
And I got the other one too and some stickers. Thank you very, very, very much. Jeffrey Blackman was good enough to um to order all the books at once, all seven books I had available. If I find a copy of number one, Jeffrey, I'll get it to you. Um, but I sent him out a little bonus with his package. So I don't know if he got it yet or not. I just sent out a couple of days ago. But um, that was kind of fun. I, I, I did send out about 36 books so far, probably mm -hmm. approximately. And mm -hmm. some as gifts, some as sales, some as people had work in their collections. But I bought all copies of all my other books, too. So I got books one or I got books two through seven. And uh, Jeffrey's going to check the mail now. And if it's not there today, Jeff, it was a package. Yours was in a box. So it might take a little bit longer. Um, but I sent out a whole bunch of coloring books. I do coloring books every year, folks. And I um, and you can order my coloring books to the thing, whatever. That's not why we're doing the show. That's not why I'm talking tonight. So we'll just let that go. But I do make coloring books. And what we do, what we do, Kurt, give you a little explanation of our show is real quick. We'll give, always give a little synopsis of who we are. We're just two artists that travel around the Midwest going to music festivals and doing our artwork in front of people. It's really where we feel the lightest, where we have the best time, I think, some days is out there with the music and the people and all our friends around us. And when 2020 started, we decided we, we really realized we couldn't do that for a year and we we're going to miss each other. I was going to miss Phil. Phil, I was going to miss you. When that happened, I was going to miss you. And I, I like that was one of my first. Well, other than every festival we loved in yeah. Canada. First I thought about Phil the most because we always sit up next to each other and we do art together. And so we decided to start talking on this video phone. Then I found the button that said you could share it on Facebook. Then it became a show. And this was 136 weeks ago. And we have musical guests and we talk about records and we talk about artwork and we make artwork. And, and we just do uh, we just do whatever comes to mind, really. First of all, you to told me you were going to pay me. That's why I did it. And then second of all, it, well, that, then, you put a gun to my, then you put a gun to my head and then I finally had to do it. So... Here, the I'm first, well, the, the first theater. few weeks we thought maybe we could make a little money off of it. We started asking for money and we we're like, well, here's our link for our, our Venmo or whatever, you know, but it just didn't, it, it didn't pan out. So we stopped doing that pretty quick on, and I understand the musicians were doing that before the, before the show started or, or during that time, because that was the only way they could make anything. And the world had shut down and a lot of our friends had to get jobs and things like that. Well, and, but six weeks, yeah, 100 weeks before we started the show, 137 weeks ago, I did not know what this Zoom what it was, was, and I'm still people, I'm sure people don't, and I'm sure people learn as quickly as I did, but I think it's quite cool, I guess, if you're watching it. Myself. Scary. Yeah, um, someone made a lot of money off the Zoom stuff. And technology. I, yeah, well, I pay a week, I pay monthly fee for it, but it's worth it because our show's on, and, and, and we don't want to make money. That's not why we're here. Um, what do you mean you don't want to make money? Front door. Jeffrey Blackman got his present at the front door. So, Jeff, you want to, you could, if you opened it, you don't have to open it. You could open it on the show. I mean, it's up to you if you, we could, we could bring it on the show and have you open it on the show, but you don't have to. That's a, Jeff got seven books and another special bonus thing I threw in the box because if you're making a box and you sent, you know, if you would, if you had messaged me first, Jeff, I might have given you a better deal on that. And you wouldn't have had to, you wouldn't have to pay the full price necessarily. So, you got a bonus because you were so, so gracious and kind to send just well, a order now within. If you order the next hour, you get. But no, it ain't that kind of show, man. <laughs> like if you order now. This is not the Dolly Parton Christmas special. It's like um, late night old TV. Actually, I was watching. Uh, you know, the, you remember the, you remember the phone number for USA Network? No. Do you remember that one eight hundred USA one thousand? And I everything they sold on that channel was sold through the same phone number. That was that. That was like a. Um, that was a uh, that was a heck of a thing because they they sold everything on that channel and everything went through the network. So they learned how, that was that's pretty much how um oh shit that's pretty much how um let me see hold on a second here we're just gonna send the link to Jeffrey Blackman real quick so we can come on the show and open this package you got in the mail I guess make me feel good about sending out art but um one eight hundred USA one thousand what happens if you call it now because everything they sold on there if it was like backup uh, kung fu theater videos or whatever they were selling the time you know vegematics fishing like pocket fishermen um anyway what were we talking about okay you know what we ought to do commercials commercials commercials. yeah yeah commercials commercials yeah like um, the records it's 4 4 12 it's about time we do records every every week well i do have a story to tell tonight too in a little bit but i, I can't forget to tell it's um that's pretty neat that it's weird it's just very weird here we're put this right here so i don't forget um every week we show five of our, of our records from our collection this week I kind of grabbed blindly and I am um, I'm, I'm gonna send this out to I would just leave that door open. So if the door is open, you don't even have to go to the waiting room today. Um I'm gonna start with my first record. I love this album cover. Is it so by Cat Stevens? Now his name's not Cat Stevens anymore, it's Yusef Cat Stevens. But um I love yes, this sir. album. 
he was something that really appealed to me very young very young was cat stevens i don't know what it was over oh, young or the peace train or whatever it was that got me about cat stevens oh, it caught me it caught my ear pretty quickly when i was young my parent my parents didn't really give me much um cat stevens music though they didn't have a whole lot in their collection but this has old schoolyard and, and honestly old schoolyard is like the only song that you've ever heard by cat stevens off the album which is kind of cool because you know if you like a lot of cat stevens you're going to get into his other weird stuff you know was dog a donut whatever that means child for a day crazy to be a star anyway cat stevens oh it opens up i think too let's open it up and see what's on the inside cool drawings yeah. from the or something yeah. like that, lyrics. it's some That's of the albums one. picked out tonight were really not for the band but what, what well, actually like this is good for the artwork to do too because there's like it looks like maybe his son or his daughter or somebody his friends kids maybe drew the drawing or maybe he did i'm not going to judge anybody's artwork you know i like that so i like that smiley face square mm -hmm. cat stevens is it so first record you're up phil me thing did you bring your records um just looking through uh obviously um jethro tall thick as a brick big fan but what also intrigued me was um how much stuff they got in these things you know but they got the uh this one folds out and I, albums don't do that and it's a newspaper do you, do you ever realize that a lot of them were stapled together and people did not realize to open it up. I like that one. Who Live at Leeds was like that. Right. And then it's a newspaper. And a horse, it's pretty, pretty cool. And not all of them have it. This is one of the original prints that I have in shittier form. Because you go through some of them, it's just the cover and no insert and paper and the album goes in so various forms of because it costs way too much money to do that nowadays so you'd be so surprised some of the stuff i work on nowadays the album covers that you have unlimited options now inside whatever you want i did booklets and go into i've got ones where they go into it the record goes into like a sleeve on the side like a, a okay. folder kind of I, I know you can but how much more financially is that oh, a lot a lot yeah that's what i'm saying sure. so you have to set a limit so I think that, well, if you're, you know, records, you know, this is my next one here. You know who this is? Afternoon. Afternoon Moon. Moon. Uh, good friends of ours from the Ottawa area. That they, they don't play anymore because one of the brothers moved away, but they were a, a set of twins. They played really good, like what you call it, funk rock. I don't know what you call it because he was funky. He had funky voice and, and the, the, the keyboard was really, he was really soulful and he played keys. Uh, my friend Jordan did and his friend Josh plays guitar and then Justin Crabb on, on drums. And um, who played bass in Afternoon Moon? Why, am I, why is that? Why is that blanking to me? Louis played bass in Afternoon Moon. Louis, Louis Jacoby, yeah. But yeah, it's a great band. Afternoon Moon. If you get a chance, give them a few listens on Spotify. Make their numbers go over a thousand. And um, check them out. A lot of good stuff. At Shoe Fest last year, when they played right. Shoe Fest, everybody was coming out there. We're going. Did you see two years ago? Moon? Two years ago, but they were all very, very excited about Afternoon Moon, which is really cool. So. Yeah, I was a big fan and became friends with them. Uh, big fans of theirs when they played. Yeah, brought back good memories and just the album's called Dance in the Rain, folks. Dance get it, get it if you can. You know, every every all our studio guests tonight will receive a complimentary copy of uh, uh, Nothing. Uh, yeah, you better watch what you're saying. I've I've got uh, quite a few uh, IOUs from. Uh, yeah. I know, I know, I know. I sent out stickers and stuff to people, and I haven't always done it, you know. I got but like four or five. If they see me in public, if they see me live, and I have stickers in my pocket, they're going to get some. I've got a huge stack of stickers here that's just like all different kinds of stickers I give away. So, mm -hmm. and rolling papers, whatever. That's a pack of rolling papers. Shit. Some more albums in my collection that uh, I forgot to give to you um, because I won't listen to them. They probably could be collectibles, but it's not really what it's about. But, uh, uh, square dance uh, and all these albums the bottom line is they're all recorded in nashville tennessee like mm -hmm. a, a small milk crate so it was like some and they're and i'm like not they were all recorded in nashville so nashville is a super it's the music city man it is it used to be uh well, la new york this time austin, of year for movies you like christmas Chicago, movies austin stuff? texas it's nashville though you like Christmas movies? I love it. Just <laughs> I was going to put one on last night. I've been watching Elf. That don't, uh, Elf and uh, we haven't watched Elf yet. We're in, don't spoil I it. We watched it five times already in the last two weeks. 
It's my Christmas. go to when I'm going to bed. I don't watch. I, sometimes I can't even get the credits on. I'm sleeping, but I'm trying to figure out what, if this was a, was a Christmas movie. I don't think it was. No, that's one of my favorite soundtracks. Piano music. Um, the Sting. Dun, dun, you know, the, the Entertainer is on here. Um, great, great, uh, great album full of uh, in, instrumental music. The Sting. An interesting movie too. I need to watch it again. It's been a long time. I don't think it's a Christmas movie, but if I, I watch it again, if there's a Christmas tree in it, it's a Christmas movie. You know, like Gremlins is, takes place at Christmas. It's a Christmas movie. You know, Jurassic World, or, or was it was it Jurassic World? Yeah, Jurassic World, the first one, is actually a Christmas movie. Because at the beginning of the movie, there's Christmas music playing in the airport when they drop their kids off. So for your information, Jurassic World is a Christmas movie now. And I know everybody says Die Hard was like the Die Hard Christmas movie, you know. Go figure on that. They talk at Nakatomi Towers. Yeah. Go through albums, and I had uh, couldn't get my radio station i listen to radio down here and i couldn't get xrt on so i put on radio and i've had foreigner on big foreigner fan okay so i i just happened to look through one about two seconds ago so i pulled it out. i'm gonna pull it for the show tonight foreigner um one of the bottom and i'm just staring at these cats and thinking of all the hits they had on you know per se am radio or you know big hits that we all kind of sing i guess i well, we all know for sure Right. And what it's like to be a bunch of guys sitting there writing these songs or whatever, who writes the song and play these songs and girls screaming and yelling. And they're, they're going to be sung by millions of people, not just for, but I, I just happen to, because no for waiting room tonight, Jeff. I was born in the waiting room. What? I said, tell Jeff, there's no waiting room tonight. So he's in he's coming in but you come in whenever you're ready Jeff. he's just going tell him to put on clothes or something oh i love radio i love the radio i love i grew radio. up on radio. I, I grew up on uh, radio gaga i grew up with uh, putting tin foil on my speakers you know and putting tin foil on my things so that i could um get get stations further away but i wish i was old enough to say that i was i was i was, I was alive when this happened the war of the worlds it was like 1946 or something like that mm-hmm I want to say it was just before or just after the 1947 um, news of Roswell. You know, after 46 is 47, yep. So I'm guessing that just after 46 is 47 is my, is my guess, my best guess. But this is a great, this is an original um, recording. Well, it's not an original recording. It's a, a copy of an original recording of the actual radio program that was on that night. And, and it's, you know, they cut right into the middle of the program. It's not like, it sounds like a real news broadcast when you listen to this album. And until, I mean, I, honestly, all the way through it. There's nothing on that broadcast that says it's not real. And there was no internet to check. There was no TV to turn on. It was just this broadcast. And that freaks some people out. And then we, and since then, since like 1947, whenever that alien thing happened, um, everything changed in that moment. Everything in, in, in writing change, in movies, in, in all kinds of things started to happen about that time, about aliens. And because of, I, I blame this, I think it was about the same time. I wonder, somebody could tell me what year it was, but. I don't remember. Long ass time ago. I know that War of the Worlds, but that like the the writer Ray Bradbury. I read a lot of his books, and before like, right before that moment, like 1945, 1946, he was writing about science fiction that happens on Earth. In 1947, he starts writing about space, and all of his all of his stories change from crazy human stuff to crazy alien stuff. So it really uh stirred the imagination, so to speak, folks. So check that one out when you get a chance. The War of the Worlds, Orson Welles. I'm sure you can get it on Spotify if you're really desperate. Yeah. Hey Jeff, what's up, buddy? We got one more record of piece to show, and um, and then we're gonna bring, and then you're here, so you just hang out. You're here. Happy, happy Friday, brother. Happy Friday. Sorry. Happy Friday, Jeff. Where the Giants gonna get Aaron Judge? Maybe. Oh boy. All right, sports is later. We'll let you guys talk about that in a minute. Go ahead. And, go ahead, right. Phil. Um, I like Christmas albums. I like Christmas time, and I like Christmas shows back in the day um, when you only had TV. They used to have all, you know, Bob Hope special Christmas, uh, uh, the Carpenter special. Uh, Love Karen Carpenter. The car, what's a Carpenter's Christmas special? I like Christmas shows uh, at that time, and you used to have you know everybody gather around, everything's decorated. So on ABC, NBC, you know, showing my age, but that's all you had. And I love the Christmas uh, get-togethers, you know. All right, it's four twenty-three. We missed it by like four minutes. What are we doing? Nineteen thirty-eight is when the War of the Worlds thing happened. So think about that, Kurt. And then after that, the world changed. By nineteen forty-seven, they were so freaked out. Nine years later, they were so freaked out. They saw those aliens. You're still freaked out. I am freaked out a little bit. Anyway, Voyage to the Moon, I think, came out before that, like 1920s or something like that, the first movie about going to the moon. 
Um, so this is this album is a Christmas album for me. And it doesn't seem like a Christmas album because it doesn't really have a Christmas theme to it. But when I was about 14 years old, and Don, I've showed this on the show before, and I probably told the story before. When I was about 14 years old, my grandma asked my mom and dad what I liked. And because I liked Prince at the time, she went out and got me the Purple Rain soundtrack for Christmas. I remember opening that up thinking that was the coolest present my grandma ever gave to me. And it has the F word on it. You know, and then back then, in the mid-80s or whatever, finding the F word on a, on a popular album that had actual radio songs on it was pretty rare. So Purple Rain, Purple Motorcycle, Purple Suit, Prince. There's his girlfriend, Apollonia Six, at the time in the movie. Um, not really a true story, but a kind of a, a biopic of his life in a way, Phil, but with him as the actor. So go figure on that one. That, th that themed right in. So, Phil, you got one more record for us, right? All right. Um, one of my uh, uh, Greg and Dwayne album, mm. Almond album. Uh, I like that already. Just the, the names on it. That, that really gets me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's it's a, kind of a rarity, I guess. Uh, just them two together jamming. Never got to see Dwayne. I was two. But my favorite concert ever was the Almond Brothers. Big fan of the Almond Brothers. And just a great album, too. Uh, and it's uh, never played before, too. Pretty cool. So um, Greg and Dwayne Ullman, and uh, that's about it. Uh, on that note, I mean, every Can't week, we some snow. like five records. Phone's ringing. Oh, is that Eric and Kate pin? That's yeah. Eric, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, I met him the first time really we actually met was on the show when we oh. did that live, that open mic that night. That was a fun, it was fun. I went back and watched it, but then I realized that he didn't start recording until after I played the song I played, and then he stopped recording right before I played the other song I played. I know, I caught so that. I was fairly proud of myself that night for getting brave in front of all those people and playing a song and just tearing it in, you know? Yeah. I really wanted to, and for no offense to the guys watching tonight, but I really wanted to uh, do a better version of Train Song. Where's Jeffrey been for? He hasn't been on the show for a while. Where in the hell? Yeah, he Jeffrey. So the package looks like it's in pretty good condition for traveling all the way from Illinois to California in two days. Yeah, uh, Bill. I I went. I went last Friday. Uh, had the day off, and uh, I went hiking with my brother. Yeah, I saw pictures of that. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So I know where you've been. I mean, yes. Good to see you, Jeff. Yeah. Good to see you, Phil. Don't um, slice those. Um, let me guess. They're um, mm, dirty magazines. Yep. Yeah. Send me an order a hustler. <laughs> Thank you. A week supply. <laughs> Ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Fooey on that magazine, I suppose we have to say, but what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily a kid's show, but we try to keep it, you know, it's a Facebook show. So. Don't worry. No, but. I'm excited about these, and I'm gonna show them to my wife. Uh, I didn't. I don't know if I've ever talked about my wife, but she's a. You didn't give the the one with. Say it again. She's a something, Jeff. She's a high school art teacher. Oh, nice! Very cool. The pages yeah. stuck together. Did you? Found Does she know that you? Are, yeah, we're watching art every week with us, like art weirdos. Kinda. Thing thing yeah. says. But yeah, my daughter's also into art too, so she's always in her room drawing. Oh, he just tore, he just tore it open! My goodness, look at that! No, no, no! I was I was delicate. Okay. <laughs> I never know. Whenever I ship a package, you never know how it's going to get to where it's going to get to. You know. Yeah, I'll save that for later. Spotlight you real quick so we can see. But I did throw an extra something or two or three things in there for you. At least some stickers, and I always do that, and, and all the books. Is this number? What number is this? Oh, something. Three or four, maybe. Fourth. This is number four. So we're going to go out of order. Yeah, they're they're random. I just chucked them in the box. I hope I got all. I, I, I hope I got all of them. I just kind of picked them all out of the box. So each book oh, contains well, twenty-four know. pages of my drawings. Just weird yeah. stuff I draw. Um, doodles and this and that and stuff. And Jeff, you didn't have any of them apparently because you ordered all of them. So I figured. Yeah. No. No. I'm, I'm late to the party on this. I generally only share it a couple times, and I think I've, I've been coming to this realization lately. When I share something on Facebook, people think I sell it all immediately. But this, I don't. This is in my butt. Uh, I gave this uh, to my buddy, Steve Salas. I sent you a print of that, didn't I? Yeah, where I do band practice. We, Whoa, we I think Jeff's part robot. Did you hear that? What? 
Sound like you were a robot for just a second. Oh, uh, I was probably oh, cutting out. Um, somebody should send Jeff the message about original sound. Uh, I, think the, I think the original sound on, I just think the, the Wi Fi is not, or the cellular data is not. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. But my, uh, yeah, my buddy Steve, I don't want to take too much time. Um, oh, we got all the time in the world, buddy. We don't have a guest tonight. Yeah, so. has that up in his house. And so I always see that once a week at least. Nice. So these are awesome. What is this? Have you ever seen these before, John? These are pretty Jeff? cool. Yeah, no, I, have, I, haven't, I haven't. I have seen them before, uh, Phil. Yeah, I, I produced <laughs> them. <laughs> oh, this is the seventh coloring book. Yep. And then the sixth and seventh, I started, or fifth and seventh, I started getting bands to get me their lyrics. So I could have, that's the brand new one, Weirdos and Creeps. That's the one Phil also showed tonight. Yeah. So you're only missing one, the number one. And I'll have to see if I can find a copy of that one to get for you because it's it, they don't make it anymore. And the company that made them doesn't want to do that anymore. So don't do it anymore. Make it a limited edition. It was special. Yeah. It was just, well, I might, I guess I might have one on hand somewhere. No, yeah. you do not. That's a pretty grateful page there. Flying Moon Earth, Growing Earths. All right. So that was a nice, since Jeff was so, Jeff was so kind to, to do something special. I picked out something special for him, a whole bunch of stickers. Well, oh, yeah. send him an album. What's that now? Well, you have to send him that. Yeah, I know I'm lazy at all that shit. You know that. And I got, I, I got off my butt this week. I did a bunch of shipping. And I, I picked out a small painting for I you, know. Jeff, the abstract Ooh. painting that I do. And um, I thought you might enjoy that. Oh, yeah. Which one was number one, John? First book Mandalas. What? It was just called Mandalas. And it was you know, only 10 pages. And it had, um, that's a tiny art print right there. That's an art print on the back. Oh. Oh, wow. And so you get a little art print with every card I hand out. And every 100 cards, I change the art print on it. So they're all different. I've done about 15 of them so far in my, in my travel the, times. I've never looked at the back of the other one I have. Nice. Oh. See, it's probably, a, it could be a rooster. I mean, it depends on when I send it to you. Like I said, about once a year, I'll change that image and make it make it interesting to keep it um keep awesome. it interesting. You know? Yeah, this is awesome. Well, Jeff, you've been a big supporter of the show, and when you and you sent that that amount to me, and it was the whole amount, and I thought, well, you got to get something special because I don't know, it was just it was real nice of you to do that. Yeah, that's the other piece you have. That's the Phil and John's own doodle from a long time ago. Like yeah, what, yeah. Thing, what, what thing works on over here? Thing is a resident artist here on the Phil and John show. He only makes special appearances on our show. It's probably going to be on the Today Show now that their show's all popular and stuff. But yeah, but yeah, so that's 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 mail mail call. Mail. Mail. I had like a song for mail call. Mail call. Get the mail. All right. So yeah. I just made one. Yeah, sometimes you just have to make one, you know. Make if you if you don't know what you're gonna do next. I never know what I'm gonna do next. I always just know what I've done already, but I think what I'm gonna do next is a pretty good, it's pretty good stuff. It's um it's called I have no no idea for. It. So what you been up to, Blackman? What you been doing, bud? Uh besides hiking, uh I got my uh beach cruiser fixed the other day. Um so now I got two bikes um online you know um and just playing music i wrote a song the other day a new one yeah a new a new song you want to hear it you know jeff we would love to hear your song by the brand new one you just wrote i heard that the song that you wrote when you did the van it was very emotional um, yeah that, about your that, uncle was that hard to play that song oh yeah it's got my dad my grandma my cousin two yeah. of my uncles in it yeah. Both grandmas, yeah, both grandmas. Very well, we're very well written, awesome production, and, and amazing. And thanks for having me in the yeah. band. Week that was fun. Yeah, we're gonna... it, Go ahead. I no, I practiced that song like before the open mic, like five, four or five times. Didn't get emotional once. And right. I, I played in the van in front of a bunch of people, and I, I, I it was a struggle to get through that one. Oh, I, well, I think that crying song, though. I'm going to start crying, man. Well, he said he wrote another song. You wrote this week, so yeah, I think it's the same song. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to play that one. All right, go. On. You could if you wanted to. No, of course. Right. You have, pretty much have free range. Um, you have anything you want to okay. do. No, I'll, do I'll do this one. Here, do that one. Uh, let's see. Here we go. This is called uh, Hook in My Line. Oh, let's see. What's going on? Fishing through the song, pretty close to hooking my line. Seem to get a ride almost all the time. Doesn't even matter if it may rhyme. When fishing, I'm hooking my line. 
Well, folks down the street, they don't need, well, they don't need to know where the song comes from, what it's got to show. Doesn't even matter, that's for sure. I've been fishing, I'm hooking my line. Hooking my line from time to time. Fun When you go straight, you must find a way to find the words that heal and take that pain away. So gather up them strings and cling to something new, something that is similar to what we do. Doesn't even matter when I get it wrong. I've been fishing, I'm hooking that line. Find the words to heal and take that pain away. And now it's time to finish this one here for you. Thank you for listening to what we are through. The story, the story must end, and it must be played again. And I'm still fishing and hooking my line. I'm still fishing and hooking my line. Something like that. For, I've written it a week ago. That's pretty dang good, man. That's 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 up and moving, Jeff. Yeah, I like the line right. about. I started, I started writing it uh, back in September. You know, that's like one day I wrote like pretty much like three quarters of the song, and I just didn't finish it, and then I left it. And then that's pretty good, Jeffrey. But I heard that one already. You got to rewrite another one. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. You know, honestly, I was telling my friend uh, Ted. Ted that was on the show a couple of weeks yep, ago. Yep, that's the guy. Yeah. Knows, yeah. Yeah, and I, I was telling him, I'm like, you know, there's there's a, a line in this song that I know I, I stole from somewhere, but I don't know where until I hear that other song, and then it will remind me where I got it from. Right. <laughs> it happens sometimes. And it's funny, the song is a, all the songs, everyone sings the same song. That's an old song I think they used to sing, but... A lot of the, my, my friend told me once whenever I wanted to learn about music when I was a kid because he was a really good musician. I said, I want you to teach me music. And he said, if, you, if I teach you music, you won't like it anymore. <laughs> so he wouldn't teach me music. I had to figure that out later in life. Um, and I understand what he means, because like if you know, like five or six chords, you can play thousands of songs, thousands right. of songs, you know, and, and you, you start to realize that some of them are exactly the same song, but they just don't, you know, maybe they have the same structure of a different melody, you know. But um, anyway, yeah, that, that was really good. Yeah, that was really good, Jeff. Yeah, so as you can see, folks, we like to have folks come on the show and play, play a song for us. Anybody who's out there that would like to play a song, just let me know. I'll send you the link, and you come on and play the song. Um, Jeff, that's maybe my favorite song you've ever played on the show. You in a good mood today? What's going on? It's the hiking. It's the hiking, man. I don't know. Hiking. Yeah. No, yeah. I just, I, I, I started telling myself, I go, I think I got like five or six unfinished songs, and, you know, I got to do something with them someday. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Bing thinks it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, hey, very good, Cousin It. Uh, I think Cousin It, look, I don't have the Cousin It look anymore. It's, it's now I'm more like the Brian Flick look. You're more like. This was by accident. This is by taking a nap right before the show. That's how I got this hairdo tonight. So that's how it works. We um we do the show just for fun. It's just something that we're just doing now for. Because we have to do it, I guess. And we like, oh, I haven't signed a contract yet, but we seem to keep coming back. We're kind of, a, we're, you know what? We're, we're dependable. If nothing else, we're semi dependable. Around four o'clock, you're going to get some sort of live video pop People up. We are semi dependable. And I honestly, I don't know that even like Folktown only does it like once a month. And uh, the van's only like, is it the van every week or is it just random, like once a month or something? Well, I mean, uh, as far as the open mics, they have been, um, there was like one in May and then okay. there was one in like, september august and then the one that they i think we've only had like three of them okay three or four so we're ahead of them by a few by a few episodes oh yeah definitely definitely no. <laughs> and, i you know 136 weeks of doing this jeff you've been here 110 weeks i mean you seem to be enjoying it we, we really like having you on the show it's a uh, good to have you, you as a friend honestly hey, Jeffrey, you know any spies or any uh, uh people with cameras like the little gopros to put in stuff because our friend uh 
is playing with Todd Schneider on tour, and we're wondering if we could uh, sneak some cameras in. I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm getting on, getting on the show without his knowing. That's a, that sounds like a lawsuit. I don't think Todd minds you filming at all, so, you know. No, he doesn't want to be on the show. He expressed that he wouldn't want to be on a show that was a Zoom-type meeting that was more people. Yeah, being sarcastic, talking. but yeah. I oh, yeah. Our friend that's is, okay we don't we, we don't push that for you know we don't push that for we you know we, we just would appreciate nope, it. just to nope, 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 be able nope, to enjoy nope. his music i saw him a couple weeks ago he's, he's doing his tour it's been pretty fun it was a good show still my highlight of the last two weeks though was steve Poltz, and i i can't get enough of him i even tried to message him to be on the show and stuff and he seemed like a real down-to-earth guy he's playing with keller williams tonight someplace and vince is playing somewhere in columbus ohio Everybody I try to get a hold of for the special Christmas episodes of the show, they're all busy because they all got gigs, which is awesome. You know, when we first started the show, nobody had no gigs. So Vince we had the AK Santa Claus at this time of the yeah. year. I, I reached out uh, to a friend of mine, but he didn't get back to me. And then I had talked to Kirk. Uh, I just met. So Kirk Calkins, um, I did a, a few open mic Zooms during COVID with him. Um, there was a guy that was locally uh, hosting them and, and, I met him a few times on Zoom, and then I was at that Hendrix uh, Grateful Dead tribute gig uh, last Saturday. I was checking the show, and he comes walking up to me and goes, are you Jeff Blackman? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I've always wanted to meet you in person. So we met in person, and but I've been friends with the guy on Facebook, and he has a he has a band called uh, Pooch McGee. And we'll have to work that out pretty soon. Right. So what, what's the what's yeah, first instrument of choice? And then, um, yeah, I... Yeah, if I would have known sooner, I would have reached out to him. Um, well, it's okay. He's just checking out the show tonight. He's part of our, our crew out there. We also have Eric Carpenter out there and our, our friend Scott Jarhead, the machete. Yeah, and, Eric Carpenter would be great to have on the show to do five records with. That guy yeah, A record have. collector? Okay. He must have right. as many records as you guys, so probably more. Probably. That's cool. Yeah. I just went through my records. Um Poo Maguchi says his name is Haha ha, Poo Maguchi. I don't know if that's what he said, so I don't know what that, that means, but that, I think that's the name of the band. Anyway, Kurt, that's cool. We'll have you on a show at some point or night if you want to. It's up to you. We put that pretty much put that in the hopper. We don't have any uh, restrictions. We only have one rule no politics. And I have all the songs I learned this week were about politics, it seemed like. So I can't think of seeing those songs. But, no politics. Go Ukraine. Yeah, exactly. Other than that, yeah, peace in the world, peace on earth, peace in the mind. It's all we want for everybody. Um, Poo, Magu- Poo Maguchi. So that's pretty cool. Don't be sorry. Nobody be sorry. He said sorry on there, but it's okay. No sorry. We just we're all gonna um we're all gonna do what we gotta do, you know. Uh, I've been playing a lot of guitar myself, but I'm gonna get out later if I get the gumption up. We'll see what happens. I'm not really looking forward to that right now. But... Why don't you guys um you know off show or something? You guys talk a lot. Um pick together and come up with a song. I got I got one for you guys. Um this one's gonna be kind of a mashup melody. It's a Christmas right. one. Okay, go ahead. Um See if, I, if how, how I can pull this one off. Folks, we're talking with Jeffrey Blackman from our, our friend in Central California. He comes from a couple bands called the High Grade Pats and Jeffrey Blackman's Bird Dogs. And if you get a chance, check them out. And we just love having Jeff on the show. So we're going to give him the stage again for a few minutes and we'll see what thing. Do. Right. Let's see how this one goes. You know, you know, wait. Ah, see, I already fucked it up. You know, Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Fixer. Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Well, there ain't no bugs on me. There ain't no bugs on me. Might be bugs on some of you
Christmas medley with a little Jerry Garcia and, and David Grisman thrown in there just for fun. I mean, probably all that song came from before then, but that's pretty awesome. That's wonderful, Jeff. Yeah. Um, I was doing that song one day and I realized um, we, we'd off the red nose reindeer and went well. And I yeah. like the chorus part. Was I saying earlier about all the songs kind of fit together in a way or another, you know, and, and, and they all kind of, they all have the similar roots, <laughs> them, you know, when you're going to play songs. I always tell people if you love music and you, you you never played music, you should just try. And then I watched a YouTube video last night that said people that play music are smarter than other people. No offense, people that don't play music, but it's something to do with your brain. Like when you play music, it um it makes your brain work in all these different ways, like hand-eye coordination, memory, uh, ears, things like that. It's like five different things were firing at the same time when you play music. And so they said that we may, we make more intelligent people. And I know, listen, I'm not that intelligent myself, but. But uh, the YouTube video said so, so I'm going to go with that. Everybody should uh, play. I definitely would agree with that one. At least, uh, yeah. Ability. Even if you just get a kazoo and play along with uh, Jay Giles' band on the radio or something, that'd be pretty cool, man, you know? Anyway, I'm going to drop off, let you guys right. have the show back, you know. Um, <laughs> thanks, play. Jeff. Real good to see you, bud. And um, and, and, and thanks for tuning in to, to Phil and John's on with us. That's Jeffrey Blackman, folks, Central California. Get his music if you can. All Check right. it out and see the band. Bye, Jeffrey. Hello, John. Until next time. Until next time, buddy. Wow, Jeff knows what he's doing. He's a tech guy. Sounds good. He, today he had good energy. Everything was really flowing strong with Jeff today. It felt really good. So Jeffrey Blackman, very good to see you. Yep. Uh, yep. We, have, well, we, have, we have last week's guest is checking in saying thanks, Jeffrey Blackman. So Jake Nobby's checking in on the show tonight. That was I'll talk about him again just for a second because that stuff stuck with me last week, Jake. That was good music. Yeah, it was really good music. We um we know what we're talking about. We listen to a lot of music, and um, there's something special about what you got going there, buddy. So just keep doing it, even if it's just for you, you know. Call I know. A, a Said right the here. same thing. We brought it up a couple times to a couple people in synopsis of stories about certain people. We and hope that on our show that people get to see some new and interesting stuff. And don't want to be popular, but they're really good. Doesn't have to be. Then it's not. You know, the best musicians. I think the best songs they never get sung. The best. You know, that, you know that song. Um, that Wilco wrote that, I think. It's about people who are just playing the music by themselves, and those are, they're probably producing the best music that's ever been around. And um, yeah, you will, Jake. We'll get you back on the show, but anytime you want, you're always welcome. We might have a big open mic at Christmas time. I'm not even sure. I think we might get. You know, the thing about this year is Christmas, December 25th, is on a Saturday, so we'll have a. We're, I don't know how we're going to work out a Christmas Eve show. That might be tricky, folks. We might have to do a special show that that weekend or something for that for that time. But we'll put together some kind of an open mic or something and start posting ideas about it for people to, to join us anytime they want. Honestly, come on right now. I'll send you the link right now. I'll put the link in the feed. And then you all can just show up in here. And if you show up in here and you got a song to play, well, we are not going to send you away. 
So right now the, the link is in the feed if you want to join in. There's no waiting room tonight. So know what you're doing because you're coming right in. And if you're interrupting, well, we'll just we'll let you know. I'll put you back in the waiting room. But there's no waiting room tonight. So the link is in the feed. Let's see what happens. Uh, Thing said that's a good idea. You know, but <laughs> he's over there drawing some kind of wackadoo. Uh, you're a wackadoodle. That's what he did. Send draw. I hear Chester in the background. What's Chester doing this week? Yeah. Been a good boy. yeah. Someone came from the home. Um, yeah, Christmas Eve was always a big one. Was my big one for the family. Do you, do you go see your folks on Christmas Eve? Is yeah, that this year, yeah. But yeah, but when I was a kid, when families were tighter, that you know, just thinking about how as you get older and you distance from your relatives per se. Which you know, and people move That's true. And pass, but the tradition on New Year's Eve was uh, there was always kids around under ten. You know, didn't yeah. and someone would dress up as Santa Claus in a real Santa outfit and go out the door and knock on the door and have a bag full of gifts and scared the shit out of all the kids. And you got to sing a song on Santa's lap. We and never, uh, we never did the Santa Claus thing, but my my, we always had gravy. Of course, we had gravy like on Wednesdays out there. It wasn't like we had, you know, my grandparents' house. It wasn't a, a special occasion to have gravy. My grandpa ate a piece of bread with every meal he ever ate in his life. And one time we took him to a Mexican restaurant. He looked at that menu like he was lost in China. He had no idea what was, he didn't know what to order. He didn't know what he would like there. He ended up eating and having a good time. But I don't know if my grandpa had ever eaten in a Mexican restaurant before that. And it was nothing against Mexican restaurants. He just he eats like a greasy spoon, like he was a Denny's guy. Go get the, the find the iron skillet and uh, and get a get a chicken fried steak. If they'd have chicken fried steak on the menu, he probably wouldn't eat there. If he had if he knew ahead of time, I'm sure when he looked at that menu at the at the Mexican restaurant that night, he was looking for chicken fried steak. But that was his meal. That was his food he ate. Yeah, I mean, it was you know a screw up. I I read a story uh, recently where the uh, I do believe it was in Australia or some obviously foreign country. A man who was a uh, a nomad, basically, uh, traveled and never took a shower in his life. You hear about that story? Never took a shower and like never cleaned. Never, and eat eat roadkill. Uh, Did he swim? And, what? Did he swim ever? Never been in the water. Never bathed. They showed pictures of him, and some people gave him a, a shower, and he died a week later after that. He died a week after taking a shower. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, I was, it was about a week or two ago. I'm sure if anybody's watching if, has heard of this, it was kind of big news. And I read into it, and it was pretty weird. What he ate, uh, what he did. Uh, they had photos of him. Looked healthy, per se. Dirty, but healthy. But the roadkill thing, that's what he ate. You know, I think it was the water that killed him, or I think it was just that he was dirtier in hell. And he... Yeah, you, you know, know I, I, you know, the enzymes, the bacteria, I, I you know, I, I I'm sure he, he, there was bugs all. I mean, he never took, um, never took a shower or bathe. Uh, you know, if it rained, I guess, but uh, well, it reminds me of a poem that a friend of mine wrote. So in other words, you get immune to something and you change, you could get sick. So you say if you ate, uh, a Big Mac every day, and you you know the, all, every day for all your life, and then all of a sudden you ate a Whopper, you're gonna get sick. Well, that's not a bad, but you know. <laughs> well, yeah, I get you. It's like uh, listening to rock and roll all your life, and then hearing some of this rap music, and they go, "What the hell is going on?" No, sorry. <laughs> Have you ever heard the story of the dirtiest man in the world? Shall I recite it? That was the guy, man. Well, oh, I'm Dirty Dan, the world's dirtiest man. I have never taken a shower. I can't see my shirt, it's still covered with dirt, and my ears have enough to grow flowers. But the water is either a little too hot or else it's a little too cold. I'm musty and dusty and patchy and scratchy and mangy and covered with mold. But the water is always a little too hot or else it's a little too cold. I live in a pen with five hogs and a hen and three squizzly lizards who creep in. My bed and they itch as I squirm and I twitch in the cruddy old sheets that I sleep in. If you looked at my throat with a flashlight, you'd note that my insides are coated with rust. I creak when I walk and I squeak when I talk, and each time I sneeze, I blow dust. The thought of a towel and some soap make me howl, and when people have something to tell me, they don't come and tell it, they stand back and yell it. I think they're afraid they might smell me. The bedbugs that leap on me sing me to sleep, and the garbage that flies buzz me awake. 
They're the best friends I've found, and I fear they might drown, so I never go too near a lake. Every evening at nine, I sit down to dine with the termites who live in my chair, and I joke with the bats who have intimate chats with the cooties who crawl through my hair. It brightened my life if I just found a wife, but I fear that never will be until I can find a girl gentle and kind with a beautiful face and a sensitive mind who sparkles and twinkles and glistens and shines and who's almost as dirty as me. Do you ever read uh, uh, books by Shel Silverstein when you were a kid? I remember that book. Um, and I was enamored with it, apparently, obviously. I mean, I, I can recite any of his poetry. Not from memory, of course, from reading it, you know, but. Yeah, um, I was wondering there for a second. Yeah, yeah I pretty, you thought maybe I was like really thinking I was, you thought something was going to for like two words and then I went, well, no. <laughs> He's reading this somewhere or something. <laughs> But I don't have the book to that. I, I don't lost my copy of the book. I let somebody borrow it the, the, where the sidewalk ends. So I don't actually have that one anymore. Um, but I'll, maybe I'll get it again someday. Uh, it's, he just, he wrote great stuff, man. He wrote um, some of my favorite, favorite poems. I think maybe that'd be like, instead of Christmas stories, like my kids, I, I used to, they, I, I'd read to them a lot when they were little. And I'd be like, do you want to read a book tonight? Or do you want to read poetry? You know, but the only poetry I ever read them was Shel Silverstein, you know, and it all kind of it all kind of made sense, you know. I think it's um, it was one that really really uh, yeah. I used to read a lot to my kids. Not a uh, Christmas old. But I haven't done that up until that moment when I read that one. I haven't done that in a long time. And you kids know, don't you read know, too much it, anymore. It was kids books, which was kids books, but it was actually if you read Dr. Seuss books, it was really not kid books. It was kind of weird. And in the, in the, in the uh, artistic, you ever seen Dr. Seuss? No, who's that? Well, some of his artwork is quite. Uh, I'm you know, pretty familiar with Doctor Seuss, of course. Well, I, you know, I don't know. John. You watch that documentary about the outside, the other, his other artwork. No, I, you know, art, man, I don't know. You're younger. You than should I watch am. it. I should send it to you because um, it's really good. You're younger than I am, and you skateboard, and you skateboard, and you hit your head, and I don't know. Maybe you might forget because sometimes you don't call me Phil. So I'm just wondering if you have a memory. I, sometimes I don't call you Phil. Um, I, I I think I always call you Phil. When I call you something, what else do I call you? Bill? You know, you can't really say Alan? I, I, when I first started hanging out with Phil, I kind of, I, me, me and him, we were friends for a while now. And I um, I always associate you with Alan Alda for some reason. You're not Alan Alda, but for some reason you remind me of Alan Alda. And then you told me that some people think you're Bill Murray. Which I couldn't see, and I still don't really see it because I already put this like Alan Alda picture in my head. Because of the nose, because of your Chicago, the way you talk. I don't know if it's the way I talk. I don't know nose facial. Anyway, he's actually um, Bill Murray's brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. But yeah. Anyway, are you still paying attention out there, folks? Are you still watching Week One Hundred Thirty Six of the film John Zone? We've got more viewers tonight than we've ever had. Six, Phil. It's not, the, the, those numbers aren't true because we, we share it in different places. I don't know what the number really is that you end up. Yeah, end up it's it's always freaky. Before. So sometimes people will actually say, come on later and say that they were part of, they were watching the show and they were doing them um, and they were checking us out. And I think it's, um, I'm excited that we get to do it. I don't, I don't, you know, even if it, all we do is talk about the show over here. Whoa. Is that cool. Is that a record? Uh, yeah. I'd... That's so cool. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it looks great on the camera too. You're real basketball. I love it. Well, I, I'm I'm thinking I, I was matching paints. I'm doing a uh, custom order for somebody, a, a Larry Bird. So I go, I'm going to, it's a circle. I'm going to do a basketball. So I matched up the paint, but I think it looks really cool. So That's pretty good color. Yeah, that's good color. Good lines. That's really nice. Yeah. Uh, I don't okay. think anybody's going to come on the show because of the link I put up. I think that's just, um, you know, so it's okay. You know, you know people got to be prepared. You got to think ahead. You know, we, sometimes we try to get guests like five minutes before the show starts. And it doesn't always work so well. We don't always, um, you know, get guests. Uh, Jeff tonight, that was nice of him to come on the show, though, and play a couple of songs for us. If you missed the show, you'll have to watch it in reruns. And um, hopefully if you're out there, please put a comment on the page. Go to the original page where I shared it from and put a comment on the in the comment section. Say hello. We'll, we'll say your name on live on the, t on the TV here. This is the TV. Oh. It's kind of TV, isn't it? So what do you think of this picture so far that things are on, Phil? I know Tom's going out with the nose. It's growing. What the hell's in the nose? It'd rather be like a, a little uh, harem in there of uh, 
mass uh, mass partying and bonfires and stuff like that. Can you, you know, uh, campfire, uh, you know. I, I was always intrigued by tree houses, you know, like Avatar. I would love to have a, or not, you know, even before that, just uh, giant tree forts, you know, people lived in the trees and, uh, or even the habitats of, back in the day, there was a tribes that never touched the ground. They lived in the trees. Uh, some animals, or actually quite a few animals, don't ever hit the ground. They live in the trees. The canopies above the tree land. So you know what's not rare is people who never visit the Midwest. <laughs> well, there's some people um, back in the day who uh, in Chicago never left like a four block radius. So you never left Chicago. I've never been past uh, California Street. What? You're 17. Oh no. I, mean, I bet you there's still people that are. I mean, a four block living, radius living in seven years. Yeah, I bet there's still people living that way in Chicago. It's it's an, you can you can you can get everything you need within a block radius usually. No nah, convenience yeah. store. Sometimes there's a department store. Nowadays it's all internet. So there are people who haven't left their houses in the town I live in because you don't have to leave your house except for you can order toilet paper. You know, yeah. you can order all the food you can eat. You can order alcohol. You can order yeah, weed in some places. I mean, there's people who have never left this neighborhood for sure because the grocery store is in the middle of the neighborhood pretty much. It Not pretty much, it is. And I go in there just to get a, a fresh uh, something from the uh, Mexican uh, bakery, which is fantastic. Yeah, I tell you, if you've never been to Phil's neighborhood before, you, you won't ever smell anything that smells so good when you drive into Phil's neighborhood. Well, you can crazy. smell the corn tortillas cooking. You can smell... That Hispanic cuisine going and I mean it's it, as you pass those little shops on the way to your house when I go in one way there's always good smells in your neighborhood of food yeah say hi everybody yeah um instead of just having the good humor man we have uh they have the uh corn with the mayo and then the ice cream and they have food they don't they can't really have because I asked someone who can understand what I was saying uh do you have any tamales and uh you know tacos so we can't have that but they could have other warm foods no but you can probably get really good tamales within a block of your house i bet you dollar yeah they have to be parked i found out from my neighbors they're yeah is that like a tamale law i don't know what the heck it is there's got to be a law because the uh trucks are rampant one of the hubs here here but i i didn't under quite understand that they were kind of dumbfounded what why they couldn't they could have this hot food but not that hot food speaking of new laws they just passed a new law here in my town that's got um that has if you they can close the the, the public park downtown where like a central park indicator and people sleep there sometimes and they made a law that says if you're sleeping there or if you're even in the park after a certain hour they can give you a 150 yard ticket now, that is not for the people who live downtown who can walk across the park to get home or to the store or whatever. It's for the people who are down there because they have no place else to go. And so they made a new law right at Christmas time that all those people can't be in the park anymore. You know, my town has gone as far, and I'm not going to tell you where I live. You got to figure that out. My town has gone as far as taking benches away from public places because people were sitting on them too long. This, this world we live in, folks, we got to be kind to each other. We got to look out for people that need a place to be, you know, I mean, it's, it's messed up. And I hope that those people in the park that have to be in the park can find a place to go. But yeah, this is called Pinocchio's dog so far. Um, but anyway, that was my PSA. That's about as deep as I get into that. New laws. I tell you. Pinocchio's oh, dog. Yeah. Cause this Pinocchio's dog is in the thing. This is Pinocchio at older age. You're too late. You got to come up with a better name than that. You come up. Well, I'm not done with it yet. It's just getting doodled on. It's just this is. All right, I'm going to take also. a one minute break. I'm going to have a, a quick uh, refresh of whatever I was drinking. Hopefully, there's some Gatorade. I'll be back in a minute, and then we'll. You should have done that when I was doing the PSA. I could have, it could have gone longer. Well, I didn't. I'll do another I was one. Just I'll, listen I'll into the forward. conversation. You're right. You're right. Okay, we'll go and walk, and I'll say some stuff you don't like or something. Like that. Well, no, but I, it's true, folks. You got to look out for the people this time of year. And something that I really think is very important right now. And wherever you go, we live, wherever you go, I don't care if you walk into a Dollar General store, you're at the gas station, you're at the grocery store. Just have patience for those people that are in there working. Because starting Thanksgiving Day and the week before Thanksgiving, all the way through Christmas, everybody who's a consumer out there, who's out there buying shit and standing in line with you, 
they can be really cruel and they can be mean and they can be they can be they can be hard on the people that work in those places. Hell, even McDonald's, any place you go where people are working, give them the time of day. Say their name if they got a name tag on, tell them hi, ask them how they're doing. Um, you know, don't take too much of their time because they got they're busy, you know. But but make sure that you're treating people with respect these days and this time of the year because everybody is in a hurry. Everybody has to get Christmas presents. Everybody is on the way to turkey dinner and they have to they have to get the turkey dinner. And so all that stuff is, is affecting people and, and it always and, and Christmas is a tough time of year. There's no doubt about that. And they always talk about the stuff that happens around Christmas time that we don't want to talk about. But really give those people the time because they need it. And, you know, get, spend a little extra, spend an extra 10 seconds with the person you're working with and, and they'll have a better day. And that's my PSA for now since Phil took it. That was a quick break. You did really good. I'm pretty impressed. I only had I think I only had one beer in the fridge, so I'm only drinking one beer, I think. Um, two would be nice, but I don't think I have a second one. A beer? Yeah, a beer. Yeah. Having a my first uh, Gatorade and uh, which I uh, orange uh, Powerade or Gatorade in vodka, which I enjoy. It's thoroughly refreshing and <laughs> tasty. <laughs> I never drink out of the water bottle and it feels cooler. <laughs> never drink out of Phil's water bottle. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Phil. Good to know you, buddy. So yeah, I don't think we're gonna get any more guests tonight. We got this is our this is a we're one hour into the show thing. We're gonna see what happens next. Jeff, thanks for coming on the show. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, send your suggestions for what we should talk about. Tell a joke, tell a story, sing a song, sing a story song. That's the best way to do it, you know. Story song, yep. You know, story songs are always good. That's what the holidays usually are about. I always, you know, people sitting around just singing crazy songs, getting potched, per se. Being jovial, maybe not getting potched, but just being so happily high. We never really had like a a sing along at our house. I guess there wasn't really a. We just never did that, and it wasn't anything against singing. It was just that we just it wasn't really what we um what we did. Well, to get your Christmas presents from Santa, uh, the kids and adults had to sit on Santa's lap and sing a Christmas song. Now, were you singing it alone, or were you singing it with other people? Like well, was it well once you started singing, sure, everybody yeah. sang. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of it was in um, old uh, Latvian language, and then it was the traditional, and then as the grandkids, they sang newer songs. But yeah, you had to sing before you got a present, and you know, and a lot of the kids would uh, flip out. Um, they thought it was really Santa. I mean, it, you couldn't tell. It's you know, it was. You'd go into you'd sit me and the nephews or cousins whoever was would go into a room dress up do a shot those who were drinking and be thankful for what uh we we are all the men and and then we do a shot and dress santa up sneak him out the door and then he'd knock on the front door with a bag full of gifts for the kids so this kids wasn't when you were little this was whenever you were growing up and you oh, knew. It, was, it happened every year till the I think we should. We have to have a disclaimer on that, folks, because they didn't actually dress Santa up. They got the real Santa. The real Santa outfit. There's, 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 there's only one Santa. Santa. You wouldn't realize it was me. It was really doped up. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, last night, the Dolly Parton sang a song called "I Believe in Santa Claus." I watched the Dolly Parton special. I turned the TV on. It was on, so I got sucked into it. Some parts were horrible. Dolly Parton is way some too young. To parts, Nineteen years some old. Some of her parts are real. <laughs> yeah, like I'm not sure. It's maybe on the inside. Um, anyway, I won't talk. Great lady, great that. lady, great lady. They even made a joke. Miley Cyrus said that she was going to ask her for the information about her plastic surgeons, and he said it's probably about a yellow pages size book by now. <laughs> anyway, she she asked if it, she said she believed in Santa Claus. So I, since she, you know when Dolly speaks, I listen. I'm not going to down down Dolly's Dolly talk because Dolly isn't very important, you know. Um, in Dollywood, and I believe what she's done and whatever, just. Uh whatever good good person yeah i think so too i think so and uh, given a lot and I, I hear the places expand i've been there in 20 30 30 40 years but anyway i've never been to dollywood they sure advertise a lot during that show last night for very never very been intriguing very uh, uh you know iron workers how they built horseshoes to uh you know just very hands-on very cool rides were different yeah it was awesome recommended Dolly, if you want to come on, uh, either one of yours, you. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, 
We got a suggestion for the ABC game tonight. Okay. Dream guests for the show. Dream guests. Okay. For, for the show, all right. I think that's that's probably pretty pretty uh, solid uh solid one there, Jeff. That would be that's a good one. If we will do that now. It's ten after five. I'm yeah. gonna. I'll be right back. You um. You tell a joke or something. I'll be right back and, and I'm yeah, go potty or something. Fix your hair. Put some more color on it. Well, everybody, it's um, December second. Um, awful cold out. Can't get used to the cold. We had some warm. I'm I'm you know northern Illinois. I, you know some people watch from all over the place. Um, yeah, just can't shake the uh, cold. But. Uh, Looking forward to uh, the winter, but when it gets cold out, I like the winter time, but I like with snow on the ground. And we need some snow. It's cold, let it snow. It's been windy enough, so. Um, my dog doesn't seem to mind. And it takes me for a walk around the block, uh, which is a good thing. Makes makes me happy when he's outside in the cold and he's not flipping out. Oh, yeah. my production assistant just said that uh, he doesn't think the idea that we said the people who play music are smarter was a good idea. We'll leave that out of the rest of the show. A to Z of dream guests. I agree with that one, whoever your partner is. Because <laughs> I don't know a freaking lick, Jack. Well, I think listening to music probably has the same kind no, of... No, you better be quiet while you're ahead. Uh, are you sleeping in the studio? Mm -hmm. Folks, ABC game, dream guest to have on the show. We're talking about the ABCs. We'll see if we can get through the alphabet and remember all the letters. And I don't know who wants to start first tonight. Pick a number between one and ten. I'll go first. You got it. You're first. I would like to. Uh... Go ahead. For the starts in A. Oh, um, I like your Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper would be a cool dream guest. He lives in uh, he lives in Arizona. We might be able to get a hold of my friends live out there. Okay. Um, Alice 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 Cooper. He's not going back to school. He says uh, school is not cool. Yeah, uh, I, I, I wasn't even thinking. Go ahead, keep going. Could be for anything. B, I'm gonna say I would like to to interview um Brian Adams, but not Brian Adams the singer or Brian Adams my friend, but Brian Adams the bass player from Great American Taxi. That'd be a, you know that's a reasonable one we could probably get on the show. Do you remember Brian Adams from Great American yeah. Taxi? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, real. There's a lot of Brian Adams. We know at least four or five of them. So see, there's the obvious. Sometimes I can help myself, but I'm wasting all of my time. Yeah, I was hoping that's where you were going to go with hey, that. Hey, Chrissy McVie. We hadn't said anything yet, folks. But um. Yeah. Um. Chrissy McVie. Cheers. Hmm. Just her store. He's um yeah, shed a tear. Um, big fan of Fleetwood Mac, and uh, um, they both had such cool voices, Christy and Stevie. But they were so different. Mm -hmm. They were so different from each other. But they had, but but both so inter interesting and individual at the same time. They didn't want to sound like anybody else you've ever heard. It had to be, you know. I mean, time. yeah, I uh, heard of that song a couple times since she's passed. Uh, and just lost it, dude. Lost. I see. I, I, see, I, I, mean, I don't, lost. I don't it. have a huge connection to her. You know, I, of course, I love the music. I'm older. Yeah, I'm big. I wasn't and, um, a super fan of Chris of, of those guys. You know, um, mm -hmm. but I get it though, and I think that um, that's a sad loss. That's a sad loss in music. Um, mm -hmm. you know, Fleetwood Mac. That's a, that's a. She's gone off with um, Mick Fleetwood's not here around anymore either. I don't think so. They've gone off to have a date. I think they dated oh. back in the early seventies. Well, when I put in perspective of when I, I put up my year, if I can put it five years before and after, okay, anybody in that time period, that's one of the top five most influential bands of that era. Sometimes it, I think about those are the know, bands. But I don't lucky. know what kind of music you were listening to. So it could be you, you know, you didn't like rock and roll, or you didn't, uh, you like jazz or rap. So, but Fleetwood Mac. Hey. I mean, I like jazz and rap and Fleetwood Mac. Oh, I love jazz. I'm doing a jazz album for somebody right now. Utah jazz? No, no sports right now. Okay, you're up uh, D. 
D, I would say for who I do want to dream guest for D is going to be um, Dr. Demento. Would be the coolest guest we could ever possibly have on the show. Now, there's going to cousin Eddie this a little bit. And I'm going to say, if anybody out there wants to get me something I want for Christmas, get Dr. Demento on the show with us. If he's even still around, I'm not even sure. But if he's not, we should just quote him. We should talk about Dr. Demento more often. Gave me a lot of my musical tastes. He would be uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. Yeah, that'd, that'd I want to see guy. what the I just like to sit in a room and let other him and talk to other people and observe because unless he had a cigar and a good glass of scotch or something and yeah, just just, just to uh, That's a good one. Edgar Allan Poe. Be a flat wall. Now you you think of Edgar Allan Poe because you're Edgar Allan Ho. That's my that's a whole different poet. Um but oh, Paul, I said ho. Oh, <laughs> Paul. Oh, yeah, to Paul too. I met Eddie Girl on Ho Shoe Fest. Um, good dude. But for F, I'm gonna say if I'm I would like to interview for F, you know, I, I could say Frank Zappa, but I was saying trying to think of somebody who's who is still around, you know, that's still doing doing hopping and skipping. So this could be actual guests that we could have. Now, Ed Allan Poe, the ghost of Ed Allan Poe sounds like an album, man. Oh. That sounds like a great name for an album, The Ghost of Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, man. Okay, anyway, I'm going to say for F, I'm going to say Frank Zappa. That's who I'd like to have on the show. The answer is Frankenstein. Come on. Yeah, Frank, I do have a friend I call Frankenstein because he's got a great Frankenstein tattoo on himself. And so I, I always forget Barack's name, and I call him Frankenstein every time I see him. But now I just call him Frankenstein because Barbaric is a, uh, I don't know, I don't know how, yeah. Anyway, I'm friends with Barack. Um. Frankenstein, EFG, for who would you like to have on the show as a, as a special surprise dream guest? Okay, I'm just going to say three letters. I'm not going to say anything after that, and you're going to go right to the next letter. Ace Freely, no. <laughs> G-O-D, next letter, you. Donna Godchow. You know, there was a chance we could have had her actually on the show, and we haven't really worked it out yet, and then... You didn't take it seriously whenever I said we wanted to do it. And for G-O-D, you're going to say G-O-D are the first three letters. The God yeah, I, I would just say God because I guess I thought everybody, I don't, it's. Poor. I have a few questions. I have a few questions for him. Like I could see interviewing him and having, a, I'd like to know what his first favorite song was. Well, the point is being, I like, I have a lot more than a few, but there's a lot of people that I don't believe. So do you think he could get some messages over to some friends of ours? Well, he's right over there, right there. It's over on that drumstick over there. Johnny Reed signed that one. God's sitting up there like a little bird going, I see you guys. <laughs> I'm, he's like Santa Claus. He's always watching them all year, not just Christmas time. But anyway. Anyway, yeah. Uh, H, I'm going to say um, Harry Houdini would be a great to have on the show, but he keeps just getting out of the picture. He keeps escaping the the, the emails I'm sending him. I believe that he's still alive. I think Harry Houdini is still alive. I think it's possible. That eye looks pretty sad thing that you did there. It looks like he's kind of got punched in the eye maybe or something like that. But maybe we should just start changing into something else. You know, maybe there's even a few hairs that come this way off the side of his head. But I said Harry Houdini, man. Okay. I... Um, famous rappers, come on. Uh, <laughs> or famous, who, who remember the, the tale of the headless horseman? Tail. Uh, okay, we're gonna go iguana. I'm gonna go iguana. <laughs> I'm going to go, how can you, you want to interview an iguana on the show? Yeah, because you know what? One of my favorite pets and things with a heart in my life was an iguana. I had an iguana named Toby. He was, I got him from a pet store. He was a baby and uh, put him in a cage in a, in a, in a cage. And eventually he was never caged. He ran around the house until he passed, but the point was he was never caged. He ran around like a cat or a dog. Okay, this is for you, Phil. Yeah, I miss my buddy Toby. 
You you I, seen him on the yeah, Toby was the bomb. I go on a mission. Very intellectually mission. smart, and I thought he anyway. <laughs> Iguanas. Toby. Iguana. Iguanas. For Jay, I would always love would always love to interview um Janice Joplin. Double J's, but I think that'd be the coolest interview. There's some cool videos out there of her talking, and I always always I've always looked up to um and go uh, to always looked up to uh, Janis Joplin and her performance and who she was. I just turned my son. Well, I didn't try to turn my son on to him recently. We were listening to a song by her. What in the world have you done or whatever? I remember the, the actual name of the song, but um, it was really good. And 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 he had never really listened to it before. And we turned the crank the stereo up. We're on the road coming home. And if you listen to some Janis Joplin. You got to get past the beginning of it and listen to her build up to where she starts to really get into it. And like, it becomes like a performance and there aren't too many people who can do that in history. You know, Eddie James, uh, Janis Joplin, maybe Whitney Houston, maybe what I say, you know, they could really, but then she wasn't even doing that though. You know, and a lot of people would try to be Janis Joplin for a lot of times, but they never, ever got that close to what Janis could do. And even if she was just drunk and tearing her vocal cords out, but how she did it was, so I like Janice Joplin. So you get K tonight, which is always the fun one. Just watched the movie the other day, and I just run my rotation. I, I, Killer Sharks. What, I, I like to know what the hell Killer Sharks think of. They never sleep, per se, or they never sit still. Um, they're always chomping at the bits. I mean, do they need a Xanax or something? Um, but uh, Killer Sharks, I think they get a bad rap. They're hungry. They want to eat. You get in the way, you know. You get eaten. Yeah. I mean, when you're on a surfboard, you get a dog treat out there, you know. So, killer sharks. I want to see what all there's going on in their mind. Somebody said Jack London. I like that. Killer sharks. Okay. So, if we're gonna interview a shark, I would be what what breed of shark do would you like to interview the most? Um, a nursery shark. <laughs> Under three is that what you said? What? <laughs> I don't know what you just said, but I like it. I was I would interview the land shark for sure. Land shark. You remember land shark? No. Okay, so killer sharks. So L, I'm gonna say who I would like to have on the get on the on the show is all the surviving members of Led Zeppelin and the John Bonham uh hologram as part of the, that that interview. So we could ask those guys if the book was really true about John Bonham. The book called Hammer of the Gods. I don't know if you ever read it. It's a it's an autobiography written by the drummer who had just passed away's close friend. So it's kind of bullshit all the way through it. But it's fun to read. You think about your, your your band you love being like crazy superheroes of the rock and roll world. And those guys kind of were. Cool. Yeah. Zeppelin? Led Zeppelin. Yeah, they're okay. You've heard the stories, I'm sure. There's there's a 10 or 11 tales in the book. There it's interesting to read. Some of it could be partially true. I'm not so sure about the 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 dogfish shark, but the but the, um, the dogfish has got a rather a rough surface. We won't talk about the dogfish. But um, Led Zeppelin. So L for Led Zeppelin. So you get M. This is a good one, Jeff. See, we need people to suggest the ideas for this game because it just makes it better. For M, I'm going to give it to Phil. We're get, um The first uh, th thought was Monty Python, um, the guys from Monty Python's Flying Circus. Um, I would love to meet those guys and talk um, to them. Way beyond my uh, intellectual realm and what, but I, even the, I still kind of watch some of the outtakes of some of their shows, you know, you, and just go, what the hell is going on with your mind? Um, and... Uh, how many shows and uh, they direct and produce and write now? I do believe a few, and I'm going to get them wrong. Um, uh, I do believe 12 Monkeys was written by uh, one of the guys from Monty Python or directed. Terry Gilliam. Yeah, Terry Gilliam. And Terry Gilliam. Also directed is my Time Bandits. He directed some amazing, Brazil. Some of the best movies of all time, honestly. Yeah, Terry Gilliam. Terry Gilliam uh, my favorite movie of all time is 12 Monkeys, so put it that way. Um, I shouldn't know. I watched that one for a while. Has it got a Christmas tree in it anywhere? Is there a Christmas Mine's tree inside? Anyway, because my Python's for N. I'm going to say, did I forget what I was going to say for N? Because we've had some good guests that started with N before. We had Nolan's Drew Peck. 
Ted Nunez. So for a dream guest for N, I'm gonna say um, the kid from Never Ending Story, the original version, Bastion. I'd like to ask him what it was like to ride that luck dragon. Okay, things getting bored. He's drawing again. Okay, for O, I'd like to introduce or uh, uh, interview Outer Space. All right, I like that we're getting we're getting non. Yeah, yeah, but what the heck is out there, man? We can't even get to the moon. What the heck is out? Wait, 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 wait. What the heck is really out there? It, it'll confuse your mind if you have a room full of people and you it, you just be like a room and you that's all you have to input. What do you think is out there? You cannot talk about anything else, but what is outside there? What's in the dark? Is, was there other planets? Some Are we just a part of a single it, cell? It, it'll drive you absolutely mentally insane. I've seen people walk out of room because I've done this before. And someone just got really couldn't handle it and had to leave and it, it couldn't deal with it. So because um, well, what's out there? How would you phrase the question to outer space? What would you ask him? Well, I don't know. I'm not doing it right right now, but I would it, ask him. Um, it would be it would be a room like this, and you could do whatever you want, and then you'd back down, and you'd have to lock the door, and then they'd just sit there and re rephrase the questions. But what the heck is out there? Do you believe? I don't know. I do. I don't. And that's where I think where where the they or we don't connect our brains. They deflect it before we can figure it out. Mm. <laughs> don't give me thumb. <laughs> what the hell is thumb? You're uh, controlled we, by that alien number. Three. I had an experience talking to a friend one night about outer space, and it started off talking about where we were at. And we started talking about as you get further out in space, what happens? And we ended up right back where we were at the beginning. So we realized that outer space is just a big loop. And if you go all the way out to the very edge of it, and you go past the edge of it, and you look back, it just looks like you looking at outer space. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm not blasting. Do you know, I mean, that's my thought. You know, I, I just came up with just now because I just, write, I'm, you know, whatever. Play music. I, <laughs> I mean, it's their shit. I, I just, I just, it boggles my mind. I don't know. The thing about people playing music who are smarter than me, and that's definitely Jeff Blackman. He's definitely a, a smarter than me. So for P, I'm going to say, no, wait, what did you just say? Outer space, O, P, P. I'm going to say um, Weird Al Yankovic. I think that starts with the P, doesn't it? No, Paul Rubens is who I'd probably interview. Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman, you know who Paul Rubens is. Uh, I would interview Paul Rubens because I think that I was fascinated with it. What he, I'd like to, you know, they just made a movie about Weird Al, but they need to make a movie about the life of Pee Wee Herman. And it probably won't happen until after he's gone. It has turmoil. It has stress. It has it has funny. It has comedy. It has drama, I'm sure. But I would I would probably watch the movie about the life of Pee Wee Herman. And I know they have Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That's a biopic. That's not real. That's a, it's an autobiography. And, you know, autobiographies are 90% bullshit anyway. So, or so they say, which makes sense. If you're writing a book about yourself, are you going to tell them everything and you're going to make it like as embarrassing as it was? Or are you going to tell them all the details? No. It's when your friend writes a story about you after you die that all those details get in the movie. So Paul Rubens, I'm not jinxed now. I want to interview him on my show. If you guys all know Pee Wee Herman, bring him to my house on Christmas Day with a big bow on his chest. And you will be granted a new, the next artwork I make or whatever. Yeah. That's my P. Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> I love that there's a little delay. Because when I do something funny, it takes you a half a second to laugh at it. Or maybe you're really just thinking for that half a second. No, I just... <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Q, Q would be for uh, queen, the queen. What the hell? What does a queen do? Why do you become a queen? No, Wait a minute, the queen or a queen? Because it could be the queen of Wakanda, the queen of a country, like the Queen Elizabeth or Queen something like that. I know there could be a lot of queens here, right? But we're going with one queen right now. Freddie Mercury, the queen of a country. 
No. It's like the president. What what the heck? Or I guess it would be like a president. So, yeah, I mean, you're the queen of what the hell do you do? I mean, you inherit all this stuff. You know, what Clark, 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 much. Clark Griswold says that she queens and vacuums. Vacation joke, European yeah, vacation. My parents, every time I talk about music, they always bring up when they're in the airport, all this luggage had queen on it. And they're like, oh, get the queen of England is here. The queen of England is here. And my dad or mom, or my dad goes, when's the queen come? Oh, it's the rock band queen. <laughs> That's Freddie, awesome. Mer- Freddie, Freddie Mercury and the boys coming through uh, the airport. Nice, nice. And That's I true. thought it was the queen of England. So in my first album that I ever got, which I can remember, which was in my collection, was Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody from my dad. Nice, nice. Um, R, I'm going to say for R, I'm going to say um, I would like to interview. Man, I got a bunch of them, but I don't know which one to say because it's got to be something. It's got to be the dream guest. I'm going to say um, I, I've had, I think we could probably interview Rob McCurry someday or Ronnie McCurry. McCurry. Those would be probably cool guests to interview and get on the show. I don't think my reputation goes that far to the McCurry brothers, but Ronnie or Robbie McCurry, the McCurries, that'd be a cool dream. That's a possible guess we possibly could even get if we did it, if we played our cards right. S is for Snoop Dogg. I want him to come out and show and go talk to Snoop. Yeah. T is for um, Tom Petty, man. I would love to talk to Tom Petty and spend time with him. He wrote some, some lyrics that touched me and still touch me today. Um, Tom Petty, without a doubt, or Tina Turner, maybe that would be really cool too. Just watched a great documentary about them recently on YouTube. You, I'd like to uh talk to Underdog and see what the hell is going on with the cartoon world. You know, what what's with the cape and does he really fly? Not very good. Underdog can never fly very good. Remember, he had, oh, mal- yeah. <laughs> he had malfunctions and he would he would fly for a little bit and then crash. Wasn't that Underdog? That was yeah. Was that so good? Know, that's good. For V, I'm gonna say um the the a uh, guest I would really I'd love to introduce the Violent Femmes, Ryan Ritchie and Gordon Gano. I mean I don't know they don't do that kind of stuff. They don't even like to be on Facebook and like they have like a Facebook page with no pictures on it. I miss somebody else probably made it. It probably wasn't even them. But I think that'd be a cool band to interview. Ask them some question about some other band that you think that they wrote a song like that. Wow, I love that song you guys wrote called It's a Shame About Ray. It was so, it was my favorite song all through high school. And then they would proceed to tell us that was the Lemonheads. And then I would be like, oh, oh, I guess I don't want to do this interview anymore. But the Violet Fams, or maybe the Velvet Underground, or Vivaldi, or Vic Armstrong. I, I, these are just V words now. I'm just coming with V no, words. No, you only get one. You can't keep going. You know, just slow down, man. What the hell? One and think. I can, you know, hey. You're up. You know. W. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch that could go in there. Mm-hmm. You were thinking the right one. Uh... You could get Willie. No. No. Um, So if you're bored, folks, this was Jeffrey Blackman's idea. (laughs) If you're bored, you're still watching. We just appreciate you. Whales, whales. Um, You had the book of whales I got from you. Whales. No, they were like sharks. They never sleep. They just go and they're so much. And so they're so huge, man. Whales. (laughs) Oh. oh all right go on you're next for whales for, for w x i'm for x we would like to we would like to interview um man oh the part the question was Xavier Roberts. how are they we're gonna interview a whale i forgot the question <laughs> <laughs> well they're surprised guests he might just come on and do a song okay so i'm Is gonna interview Xavier Roberts. You know who yeah. Xavier Roberts is? Elf. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Do you know who Xavier Roberts is? God, the question. Well, yeah, it doesn't match. Right. Well, I'm going to interview Xavier whale. Roberts and ask him what that was like in the 1986. Interview a whale. Dolls came out. Okay. 
Wendy O. Williams. That's my one. Okay, go ahead. Oh, now you want to interview Wendy O. Williams. That's a lot different than a whale. Well, you can't interview a whale, but you can sure interview Wendy O. Williams. <laughs> sure try, I guess. Um, so for, for WX, which I already said, which I didn't like the answer to, was extreme athletes. I would like somebody to come on the show and do some extreme athletes. That is so bland. That is so bogus. Extreme athletes. <laughs> okay. Who's who's the the I'm talking who's like Steve or Louie Man, one of the jackass guys. Who do you want to who do you want to come on for S? Okay, I would like sports. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Come on. <laughs> I want extra mayo on that is what I'm going to order for X. So just go on to Y because X is always obvious the X or XTC or something like that. But I can't give those answers every week. Um, X the band, Jeffrey. I agree. That's our go-to for X almost every week. And Well, okay. We're going to go with bands, back to bands. I was doing something different. We go with the band, yes, because I thought they were very influential, very underrated. They were in the Genesis mold and more talented musically than Genesis um, and most of the European bands who are were in that uh, medieval gothic, I call it killer jam, jam band beginnings. Uh, yes, Chris Squire, Rick Wakeman, John Anderson, Bill Bruford. Yeah, those cats. Uh, who had W? I should have said, where'd I Yankovic there? Anyway. Um... For Z, the last letter of the alphabet, I would like to interview the Squirrel Nut Zippers and have them play songs on our show. All of them. There's like 12 of them. They can all be in individual windows or they can all be in one window together. But I like to see the Squirrel Nut Zippers. Yeah, I use the Z still. Um, or a Zebra. How about a Zebra? Oh, I want to interview a fucking Zebra. All right, well, <laughs> I want to interview a fucking Zebra. I'm going to ask him if he's black or if he's white with black and white, black with white. You know how the, the, the question about the Zebra, you know. I'm sure there's an answer to that too, but I don't need to know that right now. But I'm going to introduce a zebra for, for letter Z because I forgot the question too. So I'm just going to go ahead and interview a zebra. <laughs> so that's the ABCs from we did it. We got all the way through. <laughs> well, what do we want to do now? What's the, what's, hey. what's the consensus of what's next now? Scroll the zippers. What the, the Z? There's a Z in the letter, some word, somewhere. <laughs> I think that counts, man. No, it that. I think that counts, man. Don't give me no shit. Just give me a hit. All right, what, what's going on now? No one's watching, just you and me. Right. Probably, yeah. All right. Good night. No. Should I do a song? Go for it. I'm gonna go up and make a drink. Go ahead, keep playing. Come on. Back it up, folks. If you got something to smoke, it smoke it. Give me just one more puff of that worry be gone Cause I'm planning on feeling much better before too long I got a world of trouble that I need to forget Well, I'm on my way, but I ain't there yet Said, just give me just one more puff that worry be gone Everywhere I look, trouble is all I see I can't listen to the radio and I just hate the TV Trouble with the air, trouble with the water. People ain't treating each other like they oughter. Good rhyme. So give me just one more puff of that worry be gone. I don't want to hear no preacher preaching, no more politician bitching. All these love songs about love gone wrong got me wondering where my baby's gone. I can't suffer no fool. Waste my time, don't give me no advice that rhymes. Give me just one more puff of that worry, be gone. I'll be back in three minutes. Hey, don't give me no shit, just give me a hit. Been smoking all day and I can't get lit. Don't give me no guff, just give me a puff. You know that I love that stuff. Just give me just one more puff of that worry be gone.
Give me one more puff of that worry be gone. Give me just one more puff of that worry be gone. Sponsored by Illinois Voting Structures and people who voted for the legalization of grass in the state I live in. Now, so sometimes it helps, sometimes it don't. But if you if you need some, get some. Have friends, you know, come back and do what you gotta do. And um, we'll go from there. I think when he gets back, we're gonna we're gonna surprise him right when he gets back. And we're gonna throw him in the sports hole because he he does so good talking before the show. He'll talk about sports and music and everything he did last week and and then when we start to do the show, we can't or think of something to talk about. But um, so tonight he comes back, which he should be on the way back soon. He's probably upstairs listening to it upstairs. So this isn't really going to be a surprise, I guess. But we'll wait till he gets back here and we'll, we'll, we'll kick it in right away. So live art by, by, by Thing Adams tonight. Thank you, Thing, for doing the sh doing live art on the show. Yeah, good job. Good job on your new show Wednesday. Check it out on Netflix. Hey, Netflix, you want to pay us for that? Send the check to... The Phil and John zone care of how whatever address you can get for me later on after the show. But um, we'll talk about your show. We'll talk about your Netflix program. We'll even have thing come on the show. We're probably going to get busted for even saying we have thing on the show. But I think I think thing is a thing now. I don't think he's a. I don't think he's a, well, he's probably personality. I'm sure actually you probably get in trouble for saying things on the show. But this is things cousin. Dingling. <laughs> I don't know. So where's he at? Come on, Phil. You're gone now for a long time. He must have had to go pee this time, folks. You know, Phil's older than me. You know, he, he needs to get up every now and then, take a walk, get the, get the blood flowing. I do too. Nice no lie. When he gets back here, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll give him a little surprise when he comes back. If you have suggestions for a future show, if you have a friend that sings songs, if you have a funny joke you want to tell or a story you want to talk about or a song that tells a story, just let me know via Messenger or just send, send it in the comments of the show. Get ahead, get a hold of you, message you back, and we'll all, um, we'll do a show together sometime. After 136 shows, we've had over 125 guests at least, I'm sure, maybe 150 guests, because some, some nights we had two or three guests. Um, pretty awesome i don't even know honestly i haven't written it all down it's just it's just an experience it's happening it's happening as it happens you can go back into my videos and you can find all the episodes of the phil and john zone um all available to watch at your leisure or if you're bored or if you're just crazy or if you got nothing else going on or you want to drive somebody nuts or you want to show your grandma our show you can find them on there there's a bunch on youtube about 90 shows on youtube so far someday the rest of them will be up there i'll get a wild hair one of these days and sit in here for four hours and do that but just want to include everybody in what we do and we want to make sure that there's something entertaining on the show on the tv and facebook whatever keep it fresh um drawing by thing tonight called pinocchio's dog and then phil and john's on week 136 where did he go i'm worried about him. i almost have to like whenever um we got a pause for station identification i always worry that he's not going to come back and he's just done you know so let's talk a little bit about this picture right here right here this is me when i was a little boy I was really young. This is my cousin Richard. He probably smells something funny. He kind of looks on his face like maybe he smells something funny. My grandpa, Grandpa Griffin. Here we got Grandma Griffin over here, Anita. She's awesome. One of my favorite people in the world. This is my Uncle Robbie. He was only a few years older than me. Uncle Jim, giving the peace sign, throwing it up, throwing two peace signs like the old school original. Uncle Tom, back here, I'm pretty sure he farted. And um, this is my Uncle Dave. Rest in peace, Uncle Dave. We miss you. We love you. Everybody loves you. And of course, Grandma and Grandpa are up there with you too. But this is the house that they grew up in that was um that was uh what you call the house I um the house I grew I went to when I was a little kid for Christmas. And there was a Christmas tree in the background, but you can't really see it. I tried to keep it um, you know. Oh, that is pretty interesting, Jeffrey Blackman. You might have to send this out to you, but you got art from show 36 and then show 136, and you were on the show. So and thing was back on the show tonight. So thing says, I'll tell you what thing says. He says, Cool, man, that's awesome. I don't know how you translate what thing says. He uh, there's all kinds of things and i watch the show are you still on sorry am i still on of course no. i am it's hey, time the dog would come in my neighbor we have a quick sports segment before we go all right one quick minute sports with phil before we go tonight i'm gonna keep everybody too long you got neighbors want to hang out you got a rat presence for me and stuff and my neighbors just came back from uh california older couple and they're out there put up their 
John's up on the ladder, ladder. It's windy outside. The older couple about in their 80s. And they just, I said, John, you need a help? Oh, the little bits, baby. So I got to go help them put up their Christmas decoration because they just got back. Even though their kids are staying there, they won't allow their kids to do, they got to do everything themselves. So sports yeah. segment. Yeah, da, sport. da, 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 da. on this week? All right, um, World Cup is going on. U.S. and soccer is playing uh, Netherlands tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Um, I do believe uh, what I hear um, is that the Netherlands are sick. They get the flu, so that could be key. The, team? the whole the, country. The <laughs> smart ass you in sports. Let me talk in sports sec. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But the, the key player for the uh, U.S. Uh, player got hit in a nutsack in the last game. Cheap shot. Oh, no. Yeah, sort of. Um, but hopefully he can play Christian Pulich. So come on, U.S. soccer tomorrow. And there's other countries. Uh, not a big soccer fan, but the World Cup is the biggest uh, sporting event in the world. It, it, unfortunately, it's in Qatar, a bogus country. Very, 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 very bogus country. Um, besides that, uh, college football, uh, we got a uh, bunch of games. USC tonight in Utah, great game, uh, good college football. I'm going to make some food after this. Go outside, help my neighbor out, watch some sports. Great college football this weekend. Michigan and Purdue, no biggie. Uh, Michigan beat Ohio State last week, big upset. Um, big Ten fan, uh, baseball nothing. Uh, well, Abreu signed with the Astros. Uh, football, football, Bears, Fields, and the Packers. Uh, my Vikings are still sliding by. Uh, I still think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to win the Super Bowl is my pick right now. Uh, Chester, I know you want to get in, you want to go outside, and that's a sport. Five ums, he gets five ums, folks. Count them, if you want to go back, count them, you can count them. What? He said um five times, so I have to, when you say um five times, I have to um um. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, off the show for now. Come but on. the idea tonight, folks, is that we had a good time. Hope you had a good you're time going today. to get a haircut. You're going to get a haircut. Hey, Chester, what's up, buddy? Scooby hasn't been enjoying the show with me tonight, hey, but I do up, want to share. John? So Before we go tonight, I want to share the flowers that my wife gave me. And I want to say something about the coloring book real fast because the coloring book has been in the works for like two years, and I didn't want it, I didn't do it, and I was all lazy, and I was bitching and crying. I can't do the coloring book and stuff like that. And then one day, Amy said to me, she said, you need to do the coloring book. And I did the coloring book and it's out and it's, it's Amy. It should sound the, right there on the cover. It should say that she, it was her idea. She gave me these flowers. She works at a flower shop. They're beautiful daisies in a rose and a beautiful blue vase. And it's a vase. Trust me. And um, that's on my desk. So I have that for nice for flowers. I'm going to give it to my wife, Amy. She's so beautiful and wonderful. And I think that she's the most amazing thing in the world. And the other night we were walking and uh, we were around the block and we, we saw this on the ground the sticker on the sidewalk. Now, I got these stickers in 1990, well, was it like 2000? It was 2003, it was a long time ago, long time ago. Some people that watched the show weren't even born yet. And so in 2003, I, I, I got a stack of the, a small, two or three of these stickers off of a stand at a record store or at the, whatever, they were free in 2003. So we're walking around the block and this is lying on the sidewalk. And I got that sticker in California. This is lying on sidewalk in central Illinois in good condition. So I, we scanned our brains. We scanned everything to figure out how the sticker that I have from my collection ended up on the sidewalk walking around the block. Fire. And Amy said it was kind of like a little miracle. So that's a Christmas miracle from Amy Griffin right there. Diamonds on the inside, Ben Harper. I had one on my car, on my old car, years and years and years ago. And all the color faded away. So this one's actually been protected. It's been, it's been out of light. It's talked about some Twilight Zone shit, man fine just sitting there on the road so tonight we're going to get ben harper he's an upcoming guest keep 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 in touch keep in tune um anything else you want to tell the people before we go tonight we'll be back next next friday i got a feeling that we got no we have a good friday night i'm gonna rock and roll we got no plans so um he's gonna we're gonna play the outro here i guess and rock on I'm right here, we'll so. see you all next week for week 137 yeah. rock on love you john Love the Phil and John song. And, uh, signing off. All right. It's 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 the Phil and John song. We can do, we can do whatever. We
you get kicked off. Last year, I'm going to uh, the other side of the field of Sean, going to make it I think it's my pancake. You and me? Eric Hardy just did good. Yeah. Um. 